Hello everyone, welcome to this video about Alzheimer's disease. As many of you may already know, Alzheimer's disease is a progressive brain disorder that affects memory, thinking, and behavior. In this video, we will discuss the hallmark features of Alzheimer, its pathogenesis, risk factors, and current treatment options. First, let's talk about the hallmark neuropathologic features of Alzheimer. Neuropathologic changes in Alzheimer include neuritic plaques, extracellular deposits of amyloid beta, and neurofibrillary degeneration. Amyloid beta peptides are a family of proteins that play a crucial role in the development of Alzheimer, and their overproduction or decreased clearance is thought to be a key factor in the pathogenesis of Alzheimer. Additionally, tau, a microtubule-associated protein, also plays a role in the development of Alzheimer. The definitive diagnosis of Alzheimer requires histopathologic examination, but clinical criteria for the diagnosis of Alzheimer have evolved over time, and the ability to accurately diagnose Alzheimer has improved with the development of techniques for in vivo measurement of pathophysiologic features of Alzheimer. The diagnosis of Alzheimer requires a decline in both cognition, especially memory, and function, as well as specific neuropathology. It's important to note that there is a long presymptomatic period between the onset of biochemical changes in the brain and the development of clinical symptoms of Alzheimer, which suggests that long-term epidemiological studies beginning at an early age are needed to properly study the gene lifestyle environmental determinants of amyloid vascular disease and neurodegeneration. In terms of epidemiology and risk factors, Alzheimer is increasingly prevalent with advancing age, and the overall burden of Alzheimer is substantial worldwide. It is estimated that the global prevalence of dementia will rise to over 100 million by 2050. Advanced age is the most established risk factor for Alzheimer, but other risk factors include a family history of dementia, rare dominantly inherited mutations in genes that impact amyloid in the brain, and the apolipoprotein E, APOE, Epsilon 4, E4, allele. Risk factors for vascular disease, such as hypertension, obesity, and diabetes, also increase the risk of dementia and may impact Alzheimer, particularly when they are present in midlife. The first line of treatment for Alzheimer's disease is the use of cholinesterase inhibitors. These drugs work by increasing the levels of acetylcholine, a chemical messenger in the brain that is essential for memory and learning. Cholinesterase inhibitors such as donepezil, galantamine, and rivastigmine are commonly prescribed for patients with mild to moderate dementia. However, it is important to note that the clinical benefit of these drugs is typically modest and must be balanced with the risk of adverse effects. Another treatment option for patients with moderate to advanced dementia is the use of memantine. This drug works by regulating the activity of the neurotransmitter glutamate, which is involved in learning and memory. Memantine can be added to a cholinesterase inhibitor or used alone in patients who do not tolerate or benefit from cholinesterase inhibitors. In patients with severe dementia, memantine may be continued as it may be disease-modifying. However, in some patients with advanced dementia, it may make sense to discontinue administration of medications to maximize quality of life and patient comfort. Recently, a new drug called aducanumab was approved by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration for the treatment of mild Alzheimer's disease. Aducanumab is a monoclonal antibody that targets beta amyloid, a protein that accumulates in the brains of people with Alzheimer's disease. While aducanumab appears highly effective in reducing brain amyloid levels, it is uncertain that patients benefit clinically from treatment. Therefore, at present, we suggest against the routine use of aducanumab for patients with Alzheimer's disease. However, some patients with mild Alzheimer's disease and their physicians may reasonably choose this treatment because of the potential benefit and despite the known risks of treatment. In conclusion, there are a variety of treatment options available for Alzheimer's disease that can help manage the symptoms of this condition. However, it's important to note that there is no cure for Alzheimer's disease and that the treatment options. Thanks for watching. If you want to stay up to date with all of our latest videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss an update. Finally, we want to remind you that the information we provide on this channel is for educational purposes only. 
If you have any symptoms that you suspect may be related to a particular disease, it's important to see your doctor as soon as possible.